Imagine how amazing it would be if at the end of your song, Ableton Live automatically selected your next song for you so that when you're ready to press play, you just press play on your MIDI controller and your song starts. Hey, this is Will Doggett, Ableton Live certified trainer, founder of From Studio to Stage. Today, I want to continue part three of our using the IEC driver with Ableton Live tutorial series and show you how to create a pause and go to next track so that you can pre-program your set so that you can navigate your set song to song using one button. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't seen our previous two tutorials, it's important to watch those before you continue. So hit pause, go back, I've linked to those below, and watch one, how to set up the IEC driver with Ableton Live, and then two, how to make uh, the mapping for a stop track. That's really important because we're gonna build upon those two uh, skills, those two things to make this happen. Now, pause and go to next is something that I first came up with when I was working on a tracks template for multitracks.com, the company I used to work for. Now, when I did that, I Initially, I was using Bohm's MIDI Translator, which is a, a great program uh, that made that happen. Now, what was really cool is as soon as I released that, uh, one of the subscribers for From Studio Stage, uh, now Jared Dyke, he said, hey, it's great that you're doing it with Bohm's MIDI Translator, but I think I found a way to do it without it. And so I want to show you kind of a, a, a tweaked uh, a version of this um, that really I learned from Jared. So a uh, shout out to Jared for coming up with this great tip. So let's talk about how to make this happen. One, we need to create a stop clip and map that stop clip to stop and able to live. Again, check out the tutorial I've linked below on how to make that happen. The second thing I've done is I've uh, essentially made a new MIDI track, routed that to the IOC driver like we talked about in the the setting up the IEC driver uh, tutorial uh, created a MIDI clip which again is just selecting space doing command shift M or if you're in live 10 double clicking to create your MIDI clip and then in that MIDI clip I have a MIDI note and I need to assign that MIDI note to my next locator now the way I do this is I create a template and I have about 10 locators that are pre-mapped to keys on my computer keyboard and pre-map to buttons on my MIDI controller. So I only have to do this mapping one time. Uh, and then I could just drag clips from uh, the browser in to program my set really quickly. But for the sake of this, I've got my MIDI note in. Let me show you how to assign this because there's a couple intricacies that you don't have to worry about uh, for stop track to make uh, this happen. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do, um, I need to assign that MIDI note to song to locator. Uh, and before I go into MIDI map mode, I'm going to just solo this track. So I make sure that's the only track that's playing. So I'm going to do command M and then I want to jump back about a measure. If your song's really fast, uh, maybe jump back a few other measures. I'm going to delete the mapping I have now and remap. So I'm going to go here, um, just letting this play. And then I'm just going to click this locator and I could click it anytime before the MIDI note hits. And you see once that MIDI note hits, it gets assigned to song to locator. Now I'll press command M and press spacebar to stop it. So now let's unsolo our track here. And now we have our stop track mapped and our go to next track ma uh, mapped. But now we need to do one more step. And this is where uh, Jared's suggestion comes in. So again, shout out to Jared for figuring this out. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna go down here and hit D and that's gonna open up track delay. Now I've never used track delay before in Ableton Live except for this trick and it's a great trick. So a track delay selected, I'm gonna make sure I hit 50 milliseconds in this box. Um, I've been able to get it down, I think as low as about 20 milliseconds, but 50 milliseconds seems to consistently work. And essentially what this does is when that mini note hits, it's gonna wait 50 milliseconds until it plays, which is great. So we've got that selected. Now one note that I've discovered in working through this material with subscribers on the site is if for some reason that box is grayed out, go up to options and enable delay compensation. So if your screen looks like this, go to options and uh, enable delay compensation. So you now see that. So now we have our stop track, we have go to next selected, we have mapped everything and we've set our track delay to 50 milliseconds. Let me show you what happens. I'm gonna jump back just about a measure and right when we hit this clip, it's going to stop live and it's gonna to jump to the locator for song two. Now if I have my MIDI controller, I can press play if that's assigned to play or press space bar and you hear click for song to automatically start. Now the way you practically apply this, again, I would encourage you make a template. That is key in doing this. Pre-map all these things and save them so that as you program a five song set, if after song one, you want to select song two, you drop in a stop marker, which you've already mapped, and you drop in a clip 
that's already mapped to locator two for song two. And again, you do it one time and it's done. So with this, and this is really beneficial, especially if you have a drummer running tracks, they can press play at the top of the set. It's going to play. And when they're ready to go in between the next songs, they can press play. Now, if you just want it to continue without uh, uh, stopping, then you can remove both your stop clip and your go to next locator button. Uh, and it's just going to continue to play. And at the end of your set, if you just want it to stop and jump back to the beginning, uh, so it preps for the next time you play that set, then do the same thing. But you're just going to add a song one uh, MIDI clip at the end there to jump back. Now, if you want to learn more about how to perform on stage with Ableton Live, make sure to check out from studio to stage.com. We can start a seven day free trial that will give you access to every single course that we have in the catalog. We had a new course every week. You could check out our using the IEC driver with Ableton Live course. You get access to a private Facebook group, uh, a monthly call just for subscribers, exclusive discounts for subscribers, and so, so much more. Now, uh, it's one of my favorite things that I've been a part of, which is a community that's all pursuing and trying to learn how to use Ableton Live. So for example, like this video that was shaped by a subscriber and improved the way that I was previously doing something, you're going to learn so, so much more than you would on your own by joining from studio stage so check out the site if you are watching this on youtube make sure to subscribe to our channel on youtube if you're watching on facebook make sure to like our page so that you see our tutorial next week when we post our fourth and final tutorial showing you how to use the iac driver with ableton live thanks so much for watching everyone take care see you next week bye bye